When you think of pyramids, what comes to mind? Most people are likely going to say Egypt, but what if I told you that there is an African kingdom with twice as many pyramids, which conquered and ruled over Egypt for almost a century? Welcome to the story of Nubia, an ancient kingdom with a rich and fascinating history. Together we're going to deep dive into the history of the Nubians and learn about their different kingdoms, beliefs, traditions and cultures. I hope you learned something new and enjoy the video. Now let's get into it. The ancient Nubians were an ethnic group of people indigenous to Nubia, which is located today in northern Sudan and southern Egypt, where modern day Nubians still reside. They lived in the central Nile Valley, with evidence of their presence dating back to around 8000 BC. And by 5000 BC, they had developed complex social structures and established trade relations with neighboring groups. One of these neighbors were the ancient Egyptians, Together, they exchanged goods such as cattle, gold, and vegetable oils. As warriors, the Nubians were well known for their battle prowess. They were particularly famous for their skill and precision with the bow and arrow. So much so that Nubia was referred to as Tasseti by the ancient Egyptians, which translates to land of the bow. Over thousands of years, the Nubians formed several historically powerful kingdoms. One of the most distinguished of these kingdoms was the Kingdom of Kush. Kush is known for its conquest and 100 year rule over Egypt, marking the 25th dynasty of the Egyptian pharaohs. This dynasty was characterized by the reign of five Nubian pharaohs who resided over both Egypt and Kush, creating a new and unique culture. The Kushite pharaohs left a significant legacy in both regions, and they were known for their construction of monuments and pyramids. Many of their actions led to the revival of ancient Egyptian customs and artistic traditions. Taharqa is the most popular and well-known Kushite king, and he was pharaoh of Egypt during this period. His territory was vast, ranging from the Mediterranean all the way to the African savannah. Interestingly, his name is also mentioned in the Bible's Old Testament, in 2 Kings 19 verse 9, when Taharqa came to the aid of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, during the siege of Jerusalem in 701 BC. Taharqa's Sphinx, a masterpiece of Kushite's art, was taken from the Jebel Bakar Karl region of modern day Sudan by the British in the 1930s and it is still in the British Museum presently. The social structure of ancient Nubia was hierarchical with the ruling elites at the top. The Kingdom of Kush had a monarchy with kings and queens and a class system of priests, warriors and commoners. Women had a strong social standing in Kush. In fact, unlike many other kingdoms of the time and even some nations presently, women often ruled on their own and Kushite queens were called Kandakes. Kandake was the Meroitic term for the sister of the king who, due to her matrilineal succession, would bear the next heir, making her a queen mother. The Alexander Romance tells the story of Candace of Meru, the Kandake at the time of the conquest of Alexander the Great. Here's a fun fact. Candace is the Latinized term for Kandake and is the royal title used in the Bible to refer to the Kushite queens. As the story goes, when Alexander attempted to conquer her lands in 332 BC, Candace arranged her army strategically and sat regally on a war elephant as he approached. After assessing the strengths of her armies, Alexander decided to withdraw from Nubia, heading to Egypt instead. Another story claims that Alexander and Candace had a romantic encounter. The Nubians have an extremely long history, and so religious beliefs and ideologies have changed significantly over time. The Nubians started with a form of animism, where they revered nature and had a particular focus on the Nile River. They then moved to polytheistic beliefs, which means they worshipped multiple gods, each with a different purpose. Next, they experienced the spread of Christianity, and finally, Islam, which is the dominant religion among Nubian people today. Let's look at the religions over time in some more depth. During this era, the Nubian people were primarily hunter-gatherers. They revered nature and ancestral spirits. They also believed in the sanctity and life-giving properties of the Nile River. This is because at this time, everything that they wanted or needed to live was found within nature. Their food could come from the fish in the river, bathing, drinking water, and so they came to revere the Nile River's existence. 
The Kushites are known to have worships indigenous deities, including Dedwen, the god of wealth and prosperity, and Sekhmet, the lioness goddess of war. They also shared gods with the Egyptians, including Amun, who became a central figure in Kushite worship, and Isis, a goddess revered for her magical powers and as a model for motherhood. Fun facts, the name Isis is the Greek form of the ancient Egyptian word for throne. Kushites also built temples and pyramids, not just as burial places but also as centres of worship and religious activities. Their buildings were usually decorated with carvings and paintings depicting their gods and goddesses. Nubians had many different burial customs. For example, elite individuals were often buried in elaborate tombs or pyramids, sometimes with valuable goods to take to the afterlife. The practice of burying the deceased with personal items and offerings was common. Between the 4th and 7th century, Christianity began to spread in Nubia, leading to the rise of Christian kingdoms such as Makuria and Elodia. The spread was likely through the Nubian interactions with the Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire, which had adopted Christianity as state religions. One notable mission was led by a group of monks under the direction of Byzantine Empress Theodora in the 6th century. Here's another fun fact, I know I keep saying these, but Theodora is considered to be a saint in the Eastern and Orient Orthodox Church to this day. The conversion of Nubian kings to Christianity was a pivotal moment as it popularised Christianity through the region. This is what led to the establishment of the Nubian Christian kingdoms which I mentioned before. Nubia became known for its distinctive churches, adorned with intricate murals and inscriptions of depicted biblical stories and Christian iconography. These churches often served as cultural as well as educational centres. The Nubians developed religious institutions that became significant centres for Christian learning and scholarship during this time period. Islam arrived in Nubia during the 7th century, where it was adopted by the previously Christian kingdoms. Today, the majority of Nubians still practice Islam. Nubian scholars played a key role in shaping the Maliki school of Islamic law. Elements of the ancestral veneration and the reverence of the Nile River are still observed by some people today. The evolution of religious beliefs and practices in Nubia from ancient times to present highlights the region's rich cultural heritage and its pivotal role in the religious and spiritual history of northeastern Africa. Nubian languages are amongst the oldest on record, and while much is still to be discovered about them, we know of three now extinct ancient Nubian languages. Old Nubian, attested in writing from the 8th to the 15th century, was written in a slanted variety of the Coptic alphabet, with the addition of characters derived from Meroitic. The language is preserved in more than 100 pages of documents and inscriptions, ranging between those of religious nature, including prayers, as well as texts about state and private life. Old Nubian is considered to be the ancestral language to modern Nubian, which is also called Mahasi, a language spoken by 600,000 Nubians in northern Sudan and southern Egypt presently. Meroitic is a language that was used between 300 BC and 400 AD, and it was the indigenous language for the Kingdom of Kush. It is one of the few ancient languages yet to be deciphered. The alphabet consisted of 15 consonants, 4 vowels and 4 syllabic characters, but the meaning of the words are not yet known. Alwan inscriptions in another is yet undeciphered. Nubian languages have been preserved in a few inscriptions found in Soba, the capital of Alodia, located near modern-day Khartoum in Sudan. As I've mentioned previously, modern Nubians are found in northern Sudan and southern Egypt, and they have a rich cultural heritage. They're famous for their strong family ties, as well as local poetry and songs. There are three main languages spoken by Nubians today. First is Nubian, then we have Kenzi, spoken by over 800,000 Nubians, and Dongolawi, which is spoken by the Dangala tribe in Sudan. The Nubians are a great example of an amazing yet underrepresented piece of history. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you and keep learning.